The number one mistake English horseback riders make is feeling like they always have to have contact on their horse's mouth. Something that's been a gradual thing that's happened over the last few months is I noticed Tucker getting more and more anxious when I would ride him and it would just get to the point where it was affecting him on the ground and he was constantly spooking when I was on the ground. We were both just getting frustrated with each other. Um, so I started going to some trainers and some instructors all in different disciplines than what I ride. One thing that was a common theme throughout each of the lessons I took from these people is that I was too up in the horse's mouth. And then that would lead into a conversation of, well, English riders just tend to feel like they have to have contact on their horse's mouth at all times. So not with every horse, but with horses like Tucker, who tend to be more sensitive, what this did over time is it made him anticipate things. So if we were jumping, I would gather my reins and I'd shorten them. And then we'd just be fighting each other over jumps where he would want to speed up and I'd want to hold him back and I'd want to half halt, but it would turn into a wreck. Even just riding around doing flat work or going past something spooky, I'd anticipate his reaction, so I'd shorten my reins, and in turn, that would make him more anxious. So over time, what I had done is unknowingly taught Tucker to get fast and get anxious when I shortened my reins. So over the course of the video, I wanna share some exercises I've learned from trainers, but also that I've just come up with on my own in terms of teaching your horse to go on loose reins so you can start riding them on loose rein and start feeling like you don't need constant contact on their face. As with anything, I like to start on the ground. So one thing I had noticed with Tucker is that he had even started getting anxious and spooky on the ground just because of what I was doing in the saddle and also how I was reacting. So one thing someone said to me is, as much as possible, I should not let the situation affect what I'm doing or communicating. Because what was happening is I was anticipating something to happen. Even on the ground, I'm like, oh, he's gonna spook at this. So I would start to grab up here and I'd start to get a little bit more like, okay, get away from me, I don't wanna get run over. Compared to if I'm relaxed and not worried about it, he's gonna read off of me. So that's one thing you can practice on the ground is just leading normal, even if there's something that your horse is afraid of, just try as much as possible not to let that affect you and what you're doing with the horse. Another thing is I wanted Tucker to be able to be ridden around on loose rein, and so that actually starts on the ground as well. Because if I always feel like I need to be holding him up here to control him, he's gonna be used to that contact constantly fighting him. So if I want him on loose rein, I need to be able to walk on loose rope. And if the horse was trying to run past me, I could stop and have him back up. And stand. And then we'd go again. And that way, you're just introducing your horse to the feeling of no contact on their face. So now that we're on the horse, one easy place to start with this, is simply getting your horse to stand still on loose rein. This happened way before this whole incident, but when I first started Tucker under saddle, I realized that I had taught him to stand still and he would only stand still if I had contact on his mouth. And if I released that contact, he would walk off like that. And so I want him to be able to stand still on a loose rein, like on the buckle, so the way to do this is when you're standing on your horse, you can just drop your reins and go to the buckle. And if they go to walk off like this, you can just one rein stop until they come to a stop. So real quick, one rein stop, just reach your hand down the rein. You're gonna pull it back out and towards your hip. So that it brings the horse's head to the side. And this will just make them walk in a circle. And once they stop, you release, and then he move forward again. So I'll go back into the stop and now release until he can stand on that loose rein. So when I'm standing on my horse, I want them to be relaxing, because usually if I'm standing, it means we're taking a break, we're stopping, we're sitting in the shade. And so I want them to be able to stand on loose rein and enjoy it, compared to feeling like I have to have a grip on the reins, and that just makes them tense. And you'll actually notice, or I notice with him, is when he would stand like this and I'd have to have a shorter rein, he would be dancing around and moving all the time. He wouldn't stand still. So when I finally started to do this, that's when he would kind of relax more and stand still. One thing someone said to me is, just because you need to practice on a loose rein doesn't mean you need to always ride on a loose rein. Because I know like if you're competing in your size or something, that contact is important. Um, but just practicing on a loose rein 
and ultimately getting to the point where I can control the horse with my seat and my leg was my ultimate goal rather than feeling like I had to rely on my reins. And so that way I can get on my horse's mouth a bit more and use my other aids to communicate so that I'm not constantly pulling on my horse's face. And so one exercise I found really useful was working on a circle. And the reason for this, if you start trotting on a circle, the circle, first of all, gives you a bit more control of the speed in general, like the horse isn't gonna run off on a circle if you loosen your reins. But then I can go on my circle here and I can practice speeding up their trot with my seat and then also slowing down the trot. And so then eventually what I would do is I'd then go out on a straight line, practice this, if my horse got to where they were speeding up and kind of not listening to my seat, I'd just put them back on the circle and reiterate my seat. The next exercise I learned was really useful to my jumping. So what happened when we would jump is I've always ridden more forward horses and so I'm kind of used to that forward feeling. Tucker's more of a steady horse and he goes more steady just naturally, but over time I had subconsciously taught him to be more forward to jumps. So as we'd be coming out to a jump, he'd start to get forward. I would go to half halt, but it would it wouldn't be so subtle. And then we'd turn into a fight where I was hauling his mouth up to the jump and he was taking up off to the jump. And so I w actually worked with a hunter instructor and she had me do really helpful exercises. The first one I'll show you is we just have one Cavaletti behind me and all we're gonna do is trot the Cavaletti. Trotting jumps is great as a rider for me personally. It's taught me to like wait for the horse, but also it allows me to practice going steadily to the jump using my seat and holding the rhythm rather than getting up in his face. That was a really steady jump from Tucker. So we've been practicing this for a few months now and just going steadily to the jump and coming out steadily. Um, and so the next exercise she introduced to me was great for half halting and bringing the horse back to you. So what it is, is we will trot in the jump, jump, and then after the jump, I'm just gonna ask him to come to a stop. Like as soon as I land, I wanna go ahead and engage the stop so that he'll come back. And what I found with this exercise is, I mean, as you practice it, it makes for a great half halt. So then when I'm approaching the jump, I can just sink and sit back and close my fingers and he will rock back and come back to me rather than wanting to shoot through that pressure. So the next thing I introduced to this exercise is a combination. So I have two Cavalettis here a few strides apart. And this was a real challenge for me because after the first jump, I tend to want to ride and push to the second jump, which isn't bad, but I was kind of making Tucker rush through the whole thing. So what I really do is I jump the first jump, I sit up, sit back, close my fingers in between to set up for the second jump. And I want to trot in, trot out of this little combination here. And this is great for learning how to stay steady, not only for your horse, but also for you as the rider. I found that this really just helped me ride well and think ahead of what the combination was. So I would envision myself asking for the stop in between to set up for the second one. All right, look through. I'm gonna trot through this straight. Sink. Good. Good boy. So something that may seem counterintuitive is actually riding on looser rein if your horse is being spooky or anxious about something in particular. This to me, I was like, what are you talking about? But it makes sense. So if we were going through something I knew Tucker was gonna get antsy about or spooky about, I would subconsciously just start shortening my reins because I'm like, okay, I gotta hold on because something's about to go down. <laughs> but what I did is I unknowingly taught him then if I'm gonna shorten my reins, oh, maybe it's time to start getting a little antsy because he could feel me being insecure and that would make him insecure. So believe it or not, but long reins communicates confidence. Now, mind you, use this with wisdom. I'm not saying walk on the buckle as you go on a trail ride to where your horse can spook and take off. I feel like you still want to have some type of grip on the rein, but I can ride and have my hands forward and be on a looser rein rather than trying to be up all in my horse's mouth and pulling back. Another thing that I was told is that going forward 
communicate confidence as well. And so if I would just let my horse balk and stand there or drift sideways and look at it, they weren't being confident. One thing one trainer said that was really good is if a horse is going crooked, that means they are unsure. So a straight horse going forward is a sure horse. And so what I'm gonna do, I have this corn behind me in the arena. For whatever reason, Tucker is scared of the corn in this side of the arena. So this is still something I'm working on, but I'm just gonna go over here and work him with my hands forward on a looser rein. And what I'm really gonna do is just do some circles if he starts to get a little spooky and just try to redirect his attention. I'm just gonna try and ride as if there's not a problem at all. And that was one thing a trainer said is like, you just ride like there's nothing scary there at all. Don't, you know, don't fiddle with your reins, don't tense up and do this, which is harder to do. You have to train yourself not to do that. But remember, your position is communicating to your horse. So that's what I have to try and do now. So just naturally, he wants to walk slower through here and look. So I can try and get his nose tipped to the middle and a big walk out of him. That way I'm kind of redirecting his attention. I'll do the same at a trot. And we've already worked a lot out here today, so he may be feeling more confident but I'll just work to tip that nose again. Don't drop that shoulder. Good. And I can already tell, just on a looser rein, he does feel way more confident. So another thing I like to do is if the horse is unsure of a particular side of the arena, when we take our breaks and we stand and catch our breath, I like to do it on that particular side of the arena. And that way, you know, they're getting to relax and catch their breath. So hopefully they will positively associate this side. Good boy, I know it's scary. If you're looking for more useful information about horse care or even groundwork training, I have online courses that you can check out that walk you step-by-step step through certain exercises to make the process easier. If you wanna check those out, you can go to shop.equinehelper.com. And if you found this video helpful, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more weekly horse videos.